Hello and welcome to Behavior Management for Week 6 and some interesting concepts here that have actually come up in the last assignment that I graded. People were working on some behavior plans that involved skill development, which is kind of a interesting thing. Now, when we usually set up a behavior management plan, we assume the individual already knows how to do the behavior. They're just don't have enough incentive to do it. However, if you're looking at something that's problematic, like someone being polite, or someone as, that does not meet the stranger test, but or, or you know cleaning up their room, or you know complex activities that actually require a set of skills, that's different. We can't just simply throw that out there and say clean your room, and here's your reward unless we already know and have determined that they know how to do the skill. If they don't know how to do the skill, we can use the same methodology to develop a plan to teach them the steps of those skills. Now, I'll give you an example that I would often introduce in this class is there is a time when my daughter Mara was very reluctant to clean her room and her constant statement was, I don't know how. Even though I know she knows how to operate a vacuum, she knows how to organize things, she was old enough to be able to organize things. I've seen her do it, okay? But not all together. So I think she had the skill set. Had to teach her some things about, you know, how to use a dust rag, how to unravel the cord from the, the vacuum, make sure all that is taught and you're still having some motivation problems, so I decided I would test out whether or not she really knew how to do this. And what I did is I went up to her and I said, okay, Mara, here's the deal. I took out $20. Now, to a 10-year-old, $20 is a fortune, right? She said, $20. I'm going to give you $20 if you clean your room. And I said, you know, vacuum, make your bed, put all your toys away, organize your books, do, you know, clean your room. Her eyes got like saucers. She ran upstairs, back and forth, getting cleaning supplies, came up, and I went up there. The place was spotless. It was really amazing what she was able to do. Gotcha. I know you can do it now. Gave her the 20 bucks, and from that point on, she couldn't really use the I don't know how to do this. Now, had I, did that 20, had I offered that 20 bucks and she didn't do that, that would have indicated to me that maybe, and I doubt the $20, I know for her the $20 was a big incentive. However, it would, have, it would have alerted me to the idea that maybe they really don't know how to do this or they really don't know where to do this or, how, or when to do this. Like one plan that came in, I mean, this is, this is classic, is uh, how do you fight fairly? You know, when, how do you discuss things? That, how, do you make, how do you handle disagreements in a marriage or between you and your kids or whatever? And you can say, you know, you can put a behavior plan there, but if you don't have the skill set on when I'm in an argument with my spouse and I'm feeling angry, what do I do? And your skill set is limited to yell, bring up the past, whatever, you know, those kinds of things that we do that really sabotage good discussions, we first have to address the skill that someone needs, particularly in these complex interactions that we call social skills, make sure people know what to do and then reinforce that. And maybe, for instance, somebody who's feeling angry in a in a uh, disagreement has to, you know, they can think logically when they're not worked up, but they can think, they get, they get irrational when they are worked up. The plan might be, okay, here's, we're gonna introduce a new skill. When you're feeling that way, like you're about to get irrational, you call a timeout, you take five minutes, you write down what you were gonna say, think about it, and determine whether or not that's a good thing to introduce in that argument, and then you come back. I would not recommend not coming back. You know, I need a day. That's pretty. That's a pretty long time. You don't want this to be a manipulation. Anyway, that's a whole other discussion. The point is developing a, a way to, to work out so I don't say anything stupid 
and I can write it down and then I crumble it up and throw it away. Nobody has to see it. I didn't say it. That's what I was going to say because I was mad. I can now return to the discussion and continue. That's a new skill. You can't behavior management a skill that's not there. So today's work, even this really, really tiny little chapter, is really huge because I'm asking you to reflect on education skills such as studying, reading, taking notes, taking tests, getting sleep, all of those things. Home skills, so taking care of the home, managing money, cleaning the house, taking out the garbage, feeding the dog, and then social skills, working with people in conflict, being able to understand feedback, being able to give feedback, emotional intelligence, these kinds of things. These are all subject to work with behavior management as well. So I'm asking you to reflect on those as just a quiz to deal with this uh, this time. Certainly, uh, uh, as, as I've been saying through this class, I haven't taught this class in a while. This class, this part is gonna get enriched a little bit the next time that I teach it, but certainly it will be enriched by your presentation of your experiences and how you go about answering your questions in chapter six. So give this one some deep thought, even though it's a small chapter. And um, I look forward to your answers on the chapter six quiz. Take care. Have a great week.